uh, uh, I, think I, was, I was off duty. At around 1 o'clock, were you off duty? Yes, sir. And uh, uh, you remember a call going out about a, uh, uh, something that happened across the street off of Sycamore? I did. Right before that, what were you doing in particular? What were you doing at the time you heard that call? Um, I had went to the uh, Swifty car wash uh, and I was cleaning my control car. Were you, you were off duty? Yes, sir. Were you, uh, it's right across the street from uh, Sycamore Drive. Uh, I can't think of the name of the shopping center, but the Bond P uh, camera is there. And Sycamore we'll Drive. Uh, it's right across the street from uh, Sycamore Drive. Uh, I can't think of the name of the shopping center, but the Blind P uh, camera is there. And when you say that you were washing your car or going through that off duty, tell us where you were in that process, I guess, and uh, what you heard. Uh, I had to get to an automatic car wash, so I had just come out of the car wash, and I was actually. Uh, Driving the car off, uh, touching up the interior. When uh, over the radio, I heard uh, Officer Zaidi in the shop. What did you do at that time? Got in my vehicle, uh, activated the emergency equipment, and headed that way. And uh, how did you head that way and get there? Uh, Sycamore Drive is, is right across the street at the intersection. So I just went through the intersection and headed down and headed that way. And uh, how did you head that way and get there? Uh, Sycamore Drive is, is right across the street at the intersection. So I just went through the intersection and headed down Sycamore Drive. And when you got down Sycamore Drive, uh, what did you want to see in at that point? Uh, as I was coming down Sycamore, uh, I went past uh, dangerous to the apartment complex. I was in was a uh, dim downside. What did you do at that time with your car and yourself? At that time, I sort of uh, blocked off the rear of uh, Officer Howard's vehicle, uh, car, and yourself. At that time, I sort of uh, blocked off the rear of uh, Officer Howard's vehicle. Uh, I got out and uh, started helping to rid the first aid to Officer Howard. How did you go about doing that? What did you do off the kitchen? Uh, at first, I just got out and went to him uh, to see what, what, what the injuries were. I could see that he was. Uh, Leading heavily from the face and looked to appear to be the chest area. Uh, at that time, I went back to my vehicle and retrieved the uh, first aid kit that I had uh, and started trying to uh, apply pressure to where we saw the bleeding coming from. And uh, what else happened and what else did you do at that point? Uh, at that point, I uh, got, on, got on my radio, uh, let dispatch know that I was there, uh, asked if uh, EMS was in route, and uh, so I continued to try to keep uh, Officer Johnson calm and continue with the first day. And Officer Johnson uh, or Officer Howard? Uh, both Johnson and Howard. What was Officer Johnson's demeanor at that time? So I would say he was okay to be sort of, uh, I guess, shocked. He was, uh, he was doing things, but he, you know, was uh, looked like in disbelief. And Officer Howard, what was uh, he doing and how were you assisting him? Uh, Officer Howard uh, was going in and out of consciousness. 
He uh, asked a few times uh, if EMS was coming. Uh, he would fade out. Uh, we'd have to uh, rock him or uh, shake him to get him to come back. Uh, he just kept asking if he was coming. And uh, what else did you do or see on the scene there yet at that time, sir? Uh, there was a point when uh, dispatch asked me if we needed two airplanes. And uh, at that time, I looked around and I noticed that there was another police car further down uh, Sycamore. Uh, dispatch had said that they were being told that two officers were shot, which I didn't know at that time. And I just told him to uh, sit where for they needed to see him. And at that time, that's when I realized that there was an officer in that patrol car. What did you do then? Uh, at that time, uh, Deputy Morgan from the uh, Sheriff's Department had arrived. There was a male subject thrown out of the ground near a rear SUV. So Deputy Morgan went and got him and put him in the back of my patrol car. Uh, at that time, uh, Sergeant uh, I can't think of his name right now. I'm sorry, uh, but the other Sergeant uh, arrived and helped assist with Tony. But Sergeant Cowan. Sergeant Cowan arrived, and uh, at that time I got up and went down. To uh, check on the officer in the patrol vehicle. And what did you see, sir? Uh, the driver's side window was shattered. Well, it really wasn't shattered out, but it was uh, fragmented. Uh, I could see in the vehicle that the uh, officer was leaning towards the uh, passenger seat. There appeared to be a uh, uh, wound to the Originally, it looked to me like he was in the job area, but uh, he was unresponsive. Uh, he wasn't breathing. I could see that he was uh, gone. That also Christian? Yes, sir. And after that, what did you do? Uh, after that, um, Lieutenant Whitmore and uh, Sergeant Watkins uh, after that uh, Lieutenant Whitmore and Sergeant Watkins arrived and I told them they keep going Stood out in uh, Tony's car for a moment, and then uh, 
started putting up a crime scene tape to uh, block off the area. And uh, got up for a moment, and then uh, started putting up a crime scene tape to uh, block off the area. And uh, uh, I went and checked on uh, the subject that had been placed in the back of my police car. Uh, he was, uh, and said that the handcuffs were too tight. So, uh, me and, uh, Deputy Martin actually switched out handcuffs at that time. And, uh, at that point, uh, I asked him what he was talking about. He said that, uh, his brother had, was up at, uh, Tony's car and that he, uh, at that point, uh, I asked him what he was talking about. He said that uh, his brother had, was up at uh, Tony's car and that he believed that he thought that Officer Howard had shot his brother. And uh, that was Matthew Hood? Yes, sir. And after adjusting his handcuffs, you put him in the back? I put him back in the police car. Uh, Detective Carr was close by, and I uh, told Detective Carr that he probably wanted to talk to Matthew. How much longer did you remain on the scene, sir? I was probably there for another 10 or 15 minutes, and then I was instructed to transport Matthew to the Westside Police Station to be interviewed by GBI agents. And did you go over to do that? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you turn him over to the GBI for an interview? Yes, sir. And did you remain there at that interview? I did. Okay. Well, I wasn't in the room when the GBI was interviewing, but I stayed there uh, in the hallway when they talked to me. Okay. And uh, after all that, uh, uh, did you wind up transporting Matthew? to the uh, Arcane Jail? I did not. Uh, I sat with him uh, for a while. Uh, the GBI agents had told me it was okay to talk to him. Okay. Uh, At some point, did you... Uh, turn when did you leave? The, uh, did you turn him over to someone? At, at that time, I was uh, officially told that he was going to be held on a probation warrant and the uh, Clark County Sheriff's Office came in. Okay. And then uh, afterwards... Uh, did you go back in service or did you go home? I went home. Okay. And uh, the next few days, what did you do? Uh, I did my regular shift duties, uh, assisted in some of the service that they did. And on March 25th, were you working uh, on that particular day, sir? I was. And did you assist over there at Goldie Drive on the 25th? I was over there for a couple of days, sir. Okay. You, didn't, you weren't in and around Creekstone at the time of the, uh, uh, the defendant came out? No, sir. I just said home for okay. Let me show you what's been in the news today. I think that it's number 10. Thank you, sir. And uh, do you have a, is there a laser pointer up there, sir? Sir, 
years. While you can see that projected on the screen, do you can you also see it on your monitor there that may be a clearer picture on the page? Yes. Okay. Um, you recognize that area of Broad Street and Sycamore? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me pull to the top right corner of what the Committee of States Exhibit Number 10. You see in the top right corner about where that car wash is? Right there. Right across the street from the, the uh, intersection of Sycamore and Broad. Yes, sir. And uh, you can't see it very well, but does that roof appear to be a little bit red, I guess, the red red roof there? I think the roof is actually green, but the side of the roof is red or green. But you were at that spot when you heard the apartment, the first entrance, second entrance. Yes, sir. And where was that? You tell us your direction of travel from the car wash, sir. I came through this hill. Where was that? And you tell us your direction of travel from the car wash, sir. I came through this intersection and down the road this way. And that's where Tony's patrol car was. And your patrol car was the one that parked right behind it? Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all I have of all the kitchen to this thing. Set to the left, and uh, 
Officer Howard's car was not directly behind it, but to the right of it. If I may, there is a help. Let's kick it off. I would like to get Exhibit 10, State Exhibit 10, State Exhibit 145, State Exhibit 149, State Exhibit 150, State Exhibit 151, State Exhibit 152, and State Exhibit 170, please, sir. Yes, sir. The red SUV is 24 over there. Correct, sir. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Once again, uh, my answer to that question of not being there, I couldn't say whether it was in a good position or not. I asked you again, I think you misunderstood the question. I said, in this picture, once again, uh, my answer to that question of not being there, I couldn't say whether it was in a good position or not. I asked you again, I think you misunderstood the question. I said, in this picture, I would think that he's asked it a couple times, and I don't think that he may not have gotten the answer to one. That he did. So the objection is asked. Yes, okay. Sustain. Okay. Ms. Fish, if you were performing a high risk traffic stop, would you have parked your car just like you see in that picture right there? If I was performing a high risk pra uh, traffic stop, Yes, sir. Okay, now, you did not see 
that test have been rolled out just pointed to you before you got there, did you? I do not recall seeing it. Okay. How about this white truck right here? Did you see that white truck on the scene before you got there? No, I don't recall seeing that. This white male with his cap on, you agree with he was he was right there with you, this you and this him. You see this arrow right? I see it, yes sir. Who is this white male? Is that this? Can you tell us who he is? Uh, I do not know. Will you agree he don't have on a fully uniform anything? He did not. Did you know whether he is an officer or a citizen? What was it? I believe he is a citizen. Okay. Is it normal practice for Adam Carter, the kind of police department, to allow citizens to come in a crime scene? It's not something that we would do intentionally. Did anybody get this, this white male name, address, or statement, anything from it? I did not get a name or statement from him. Do you know if anybody who was law enforcement got a name from this white male that's had who was on the scene at the time? Uh, no. Okay. I want you to look at this white male. I want you to look at it closer. Will you agree to be running down the street, sitting more drive, and that red officer Chris call that, sir? Yes, sir. I want you to just keep it, keep, keep an eye on this and roll with it. Will you agree that that same white bill just ran back up from down the street, officer Will? Yes. Okay. Now, would you agree it would have been important to get a written statement from somebody who's on that crime scene and what that officer just record? Would you think that's important to talk to this guy, get his name, or address, or a written report, or a recorded statement from him? Would you agree it would have been important to get a written statement from somebody who's on that crime scene and what that officer just record? Would you think that's important to talk to this guy, get his name, or address, or a written report, or a recorded statement from him? It would be. I would agree that he went in that direction. Okay, I would agree with that. They say he wants you to call. Yes, sir. But you would agree that he came back and saw a point down the road in the direction of Officer Chris Carl Wood. He came back before we ended by having Clark County Police Officer D. I would agree that he went in that direction. Okay, I would agree with that. They say he wants you to call. Yes, sir. But you would agree that he came back and saw a point down the road in the direction of Officer Chris Carl Wood. You agree with that? Yes, sir. Okay, well, you agree that he got. Let me back it up just a little bit, please. I want you to watch before the officer take off. Look at that officer take off past the bridge. You see that officer right there start running in that direction? Yes, sir. Well, you agree that that white male with a hat on came from the direction of Officer Christian Carr and came and told that officer to park that officer that according to this video that we looked at. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 
his he had his own little man after the final was he wrote his name on it. Well, I bet that for you, Charles. Let's get look at that. Thank you. It, he had his own little man after the final was he wrote his name on it. Well, I bet you that for you, Charles. Let's get look at that. Thank you. I'm going to let Ron show you so you can get this look at it. Will you bring your blue lights on with the kitchen in that picture? Your light flash? Yes, sir. Get a little closer. Let me pause. You see right here with this hair red? I want you to put your attention on this black man, this officer right here. Now, looking at that officer right there, do you know the name of the officer? Do you know the officer Moss? Or? That is Officer Moss. Come in here, Officer Moss right here. Okay, I'm about to see if Officer Moss right something. That's what it is. Down, or right, was he writing something down on that page and said, Black male was talking to him? Was he writing it down, sir? I would say it's possible once again. Uh, I can't say whether he wrote anything down or not. I see he has a pad out, and it's like he has a pen or pencil to the writing utensil to the pad. I don't know whether he actually wrote anything. What we look at, what you looking at without me looking at? Yeah, I was. So, based on what we all look at right there, you didn't see him right that day. Once again, I can see that he took out the pad, he took the pen, in, put it to the paper. I don't know whether he actually wrote anything or not. But you see, but you did see him put that pencil in that picture, didn't you? Yes, sir. I just didn't ask again. Let me get the light. I just didn't ask again. Now, again. Radio communication and they put it on a high risk assessment. If we're, if we're doing a traffic stop, we call it out. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you get off? Tony, I would call anything out of their radio before you heard that. He asked that earlier, Judge. Judge, I don't think I asked about the radio. I asked about the way to call the call and I asked about the procedure. I do not recall asking that question and I had it broke down. Yes. Okay. If you make a high risk traffic stop on anybody, would you call it in Central Mason? Would you personally? Yes, sir. Okay. Now you say that you talked to Matthew Wood. I did. Okay. Did you write a supplemental report on the things you talked to Matthew Wood about? I did. Did you, let's go over there, please, sir. Did you read it to the jury? Did you supplemental report? No, no, no. Okay, well, did I read it to that? Did you hear Now, how can he object to this to being his say that Mr. Kitchen wrote down what Matthew said in his report? The objection is here, sir. Well, you can ask him questions. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know where, where's the questions are going, and then we'll be able to get a question. That's what I'm saying. I can't ask no questions. No question. Okay. Do you recall what Matthew would have told you on March 22nd, 2011? All right. We talked about it. Uh, there. Let me reference that. He's referencing what what on the scene when it was there at the uh, prison. Yeah, these are my questions. He asked, let me look at you. He asked Mr. Kitchens about Matthew Hood while ago, and I wrote down he said, he don't tell me what order to ask my questions in. That, that's not. I think he, he's asking, he's suggesting that it would be helpful to know where 
what time frame you're talking about him speaking with Matthew Cook? Was that the police station or was it on the second? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not even going to say that, just He ain't trying to give me, he gave me the death and I asked my question respectfully in the way I want to ask him. And what order? I had to see no well what order I got to go in. If he talked to him, it's my right to a verbal sit across the foundation on his witness. Sir, did you reference what? At that time, uh, I didn't know his name. He uh, complained about his handcuffs being tight. I went to the vehicle to uh, adjust the handcuffs, and uh, actually, me and Deputy Morgan uh, switched the handcuffs. Uh, at that time, uh, he said that he wasn't asked, and uh, actually, me and Deputy Morgan uh, switched the handcuffs. Uh, at that time, uh, he said that he wasn't asking me what's going on. Uh, said that he hadn't did anything. Uh, said that the red SUV belonged to his girlfriend. Uh, asked, said that his brother uh, did yes. He said that Matthew would have thought his brother had been shot by his house. Yes. Why did Matthew say that he did? Yes. He said that Matthew would have thought his brother had been shot by his house. Yes. Why did Matthew say that his brother had been shot by his house? You just have to object. Thank you, Lester. Did you write um, anything in your written report, supplemental report, about the conversation you had with Matthew at the same time? I did. Okay. Um, Do you recall what you put in your written report about what you, what Matthew told you at the scene? He told me that uh, his brother was at Tony's car and uh, at that point I called over Detective Clark and Detective Clark uh, questioned Matthew. Uh, can I get you to look at your... Uh, at that point I called over Detective Clark, and Detective Clark uh, questioned Matthew. Uh, can I get you to look at your supplemental report, sir? Um, pertaining to the conversation with Matthew would have the same, sir. Did you put in it, did you state your written report that Matthew Hood said that SBO Howard told, told him, yelled at him, shot? Uh, again, I want to make sure that he referenced what may have been seen uh, in that uh, uh, Again, I want to make sure that he referenced what may have been seen uh, in that and, uh, Asking questions, did you put something in your report? That's just a matter of taking up outside the question. I'll ask the jury. 